Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are going to start because of the time and it's time to begin. Now we are in the session number three and we are going to talk about health problems vocabulary. And we are going to um, develop a vocabulary about health, uh, some problems of health and some vocabulary that is necessary for these kind of topics when we uh, go to a meeting with the doctor or when we are not feeling really well of our health. So, el tema de hoy para la sesión número, número tres es eh, problemas de salud. El vocabulario, vamos a hacer un pequeño vocabulario sobre algunas expresiones y palabras que necesitamos para lo que es hablar de nuestra salud con los doctores. Vamos a ver un pequeño vocabulario y una explicación sobre esas eh, palabras. Now, it says that in life, one of the most important things you can do is to look after your health. When we have a health problem, we can go and see a doctor. And we have a list of phrases, expression, and words that we, that can we use in this situation? We are going to begin with the first um, expression that we are going to use in this topic. So we have the first one that is making an appointment. Making an appointment. What is making an appointment? Uh, when you are feeling unwell, you need to see a doctor. Unfortunately, doctors are busy people. So you must make an appointment that involves calling or visiting the doctor's clinic and making an appointment with the receptionist. When you make an appointment, you arrange a date and time when you can see the doctor. Making an appointment, hacer una cita. Cuando nos sentimos enfermos, cuando nos sentimos mal, pues obviamente tenemos que visitar al doctor, pero no es, eh, en muchos de los casos, no es que siempre nos van a recibir el mismo día. So we go to the clinic, talk to the secretary, talk to the assistant, eh, and make an appointment. Hacemos una cita eh, for the next day, for the two days, for the same day, but in some hours. So the first um, expression is making an appointment, hacer una cita. Y tenemos un ejemplo. Example. We have here some example. And we can begin like good morning. I like to make an appointment to see the doctor today. So we can use that phrase to uh, talk with the assistant and to make an appointment to see the doctor. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening. I would like to make an appointment to see the doctor today. But if we, in, in case we can see the doctor, uh, maybe they can say, the doctor is busy this morning, but he's free this afternoon. It's two o'clock, okay? They will sell, um, they will say if the doctor is busy, if the doctor has some uh, things to do and they can um, offer an hour uh, in which we can see the doctor. So we have the second one, The second expression is symptoms or symptoms. Symptoms, symptoms. When you see the doctor, he or she might ask you. We can have some uh, 
questions as an example. What's wrong? What's wrong or what's the problem? A more specialized question is what are your symptoms? So those are questions that the doctor can ask when we go to the clinic and say that we don't feel very well. They can say, what's wrong? What's the problem? Or what are your symptoms? And symptoms are any feelings of illness or discomfort which are caused by a health problem. For example, if you have the flu or influence, your symptoms will be a fever, fever, a running nose, running nose, and having coffee. Cuando vamos al doctor, nos va a preguntar cuál es el problema, qué está mal, cuáles son los síntomas. Y ya decíamos, los síntomas son eh, aquellos sentimientos de enfermedad. Cuando nos sentimos inconformes o nos sentimos raros o diferentes, que son causados, ¿verdad? Estos síntomas o estos eh, sentimientos por un problema de salud. Como dice, si tenemos flu, gripe o influenza, tenemos fever, fiebre, ¿verdad? A running nose, que es, ¿verdad? Cuando andamos eh, húmeda, muy húmeda la nariz. Y being coughing, que es tos, ¿verdad? Que hemos estado tosiendo. Then the doctor also can ask us this question. When did the symptoms begin or start? El, el puede preguntar cuándo comenzaron los síntomas. So that's another question. Then we have another one. It says diagnosis. After telling the doctor your symptoms, he will tell you the name of your problem. A diagnosis is when a doctor tells you the medical name of your problem. For example, you tell your doctor your symptoms. I have fever. A running nose, and I have been sneezing, your doctor says. My diagnosis is that you have the flu. El diagnóstico es el diagnóstico donde eh, después de decirles todos nuestros síntomas al doctor, él nos da el nombre del problema. ¿Ya? Nosotros damos los síntomas, el doctor nos da el diagnóstico. Then, explain your problems. Explain your problems. And we have two forms to talk about about uh, to talk about health problems. And we have the number one. That is, uh, I have been, I have been talking a lot these days and we can use also recently we can also use for the last few days or since yesterday maybe and we have here it's present perfect. Estamos utilizando estructuras para hablar de nuestros problemas de salud. I have been coughing a lot these days, maybe recently, for the last few days, since yesterday. 
but the structure is the structure for present perfect continuous. That is, I have been, that is the structure, have been plus the um, ing form of the verb. And also we have the uh, type number four, that is, I have a car. And this structure is present simple. Easy. Two ways to explain our symptoms or um, things about our health. Then it says, both are used to describe our health problems. The present perfect continuous is used to show that something it started in the past and is still happening. We use I have been plus ing verb. Other example of this form include, I have been sneezing, my head has been hurting, I have been having headaches, I have been feeling tired, I haven't been sleeping well. El presente perfecto continuo nos sirve para hablar de una acción que empezó en el pasado, que sigue pasando en este momento y que nos ayuda a explicar algunos síntomas que tenemos. Then uh, it says we also, uh, the present simple is used to focus on a situation at the present. It is more common to use the present simple than the present continuous when we see a doctor. My head hurts. It's more common that my hair, uh, my head is hurting. De, eh, luego utilizamos lo que es el presente simple para decir cuáles son nuestros síntomas o qué estamos sintiendo. Y es más común utilizar el presente simple que el presente perfecto continuo. Then it says, we also, we also use. And we have, I have plus noun and some examples. I have a bad back. I have a, a bad back. I have a sore throat. I have a fever. Then we have I feel plus adjective. We have the example, I feel dizzy. I feel under the water. Okay. And we have, I feel run down. In the rundown, the word rundown and under the water, the weather has a meaning. And this is an idiom. Es, un, es una frase que se utiliza, ¿verdad? Que es bastante común. And it says that this means a general feeling of sickness. Eh, cuando se utiliza, I feel under the weather or I feel rundown, es cuando se siente un malestar general. It is not like a fever. It is not like something in the stomach. It is not like something in the head. It is something in general. And a rundown usually comes from living an unhealthy lifestyle. Rundown is for una vida eh, desordenada, ¿verdad? Un, un, 
eh, una vida eh, poco saludable. Under the weather means to not feel your usual healthy self. Eh, under the weather eh, significa que no nos sentimos como nosotros mismos, que no nos estamos sintiendo como normalmente nos sentimos saludables, ¿verdad? Those are like feelings. But we have a, to form expressions to talk about health in two different ways. I have plus the noun and I feel plus the adjective. Tenemos los dos tipos. El primero se forma utilizando yo tengo más el nombre. Yo tengo a bad back, una espalda mala, o sea que le duele la espalda. I have a sore throat, yo tengo una garganta irritada. And I have a fever, tengo fiebre o tengo calentura, como nosotros lo conocemos. El segundo, I feel plus adjective, siento más el adjetivo. I feel dizzy, me siento mareado. I feel under the weather, yes, no me siento como yo mismo. And I feel round down, igual. Siento malestar general porque llevo una vida poco saludable. Then we have the types of illness. Type of illness. And we have the number one, allergies. This is uh, something easy to understand, allergies, alergias. And uh, this, it says to have a bad reaction to animals, dust, foods, or plants. The symptoms are red eyes, runny nose, and it's sneezy. So we have some specification for these words. And it says to have a bad reaction to animals, dust, food, food, or plants. And we have the symptoms. Runny nose and a sneezy. Okay, allergies, alergias. To have a, a bad reaction to animals, una mala reacción a animales, dust, que es polvo, food, comida, or plants, plantas. The symptoms are red eyes, ojos rojos. Runny nose, una nariz muy, muy, muy húmeda, and sneezing, estornudar, o que se estornuda mucho. Then we have the second one, cough. Pronounce, cough. It's pronounced cough, cough. That is the pronunciation, cough. It's to force air out of the lungs, making a loud and uncomfortable noise. Okay, cough, that's the second one. It's a very common also. And this one, it's to force air, es forzar el aire, salir out of the lungs, salir de los pulmones, making a loud, haciendo un sonido muy fuerte, and uncomfortable noise, un sonido fuerte y poco eh, agradable. That is the cough. Number three, dizziness, dizziness, dizziness. This is to have the feeling 
that everything around you is spinning. Okay, dizziness is to have the feeling that everything around you is spinning. Es sentirse mareado, ¿verdad? Dizziness es estar mareado. Then we have another one that is fever or temperature. And it says that is arise. In body temperature or to feel hot. But also, we can say that when we have a fever, we feel very uh, uncomfortable or uh, feel under the weather because it is not, not we don't feel like. Um, normally we did or we do in our daily life. And in this case, the fever is a rising body temperature and to feel hot. And sometimes we feel like, um, like we are not the same. So fever, temperatura, verdad? Calentura. Number five, the flu, the flu. Also called influenza. El flu es también llamado influenza. It's a very strong call. Caused by a virus. Symptoms include fever, headache, Runny nose and sneezing. Okay, it's a very strong call. Es una gripe muy fuerte caused by a virus, causada por un virus. Symptoms include fever, headache, runny nose, and sneezing. Incluye fiebre o temperatura, un dolor de cabeza, um, nariz húmeda, eh, y estornudos, muchos estornudos. Then we have number six, hey, fever. This one is an, aller an allergy to plants. And the pollen of flowers. Then we have insomnia. Not being able to sleep at a night. Rush.
We have a runny nose. We are making um, the vocabulary of the most common words that we use in this topic of health. So we are doing this. This, this kind of, of vocabulary because it can be very helpful. Coming from the nose. They need to blow your nose a lot. Number 12 is sneeze. An uncontrollable, uncontrollable movement of air from the nose and mouth. Some boring. Okay, we have a list of 13 uh, words that we can use to talk about our uh, health. And in this case, we have type of illness. And we have allergies, cough, dizziness, uh, fever, the flu, high fever, insomnia, rash, rundown, under the weather, then we have runny nose, a sneeze, a sunburn, but we know that we have a lot of words more. Maybe um, a bleeding, when we are bleeding, because we could, our hand, um, we have accident, and a lot of words more. But in this case, we are just um, doing a little um, vocabulary about illness. Then we have um, some other important words that are really useful that we have prescription. That is the piece of paper that your doctor gives you with the name of the medicine you need. Then we have patient that is a sick person in hospital or visiting the doctors. Then we have the drugstore, chemist, chemist, and pharmacy. That is the place you go to get your medicines. So we have another important word that are prescription, que son las prescripciones o las recetas. Patient, que son los pacientes. Y la droguería o farmacia, como lo conocemos nosotros, donde vamos por nuestras medicinas. Also, we have... Another uh, kind of words, we have temperature, doctor, x-ray, hospital, eye drops. The eye drops son gotas para los ojos. Uh, we have nurse, que es la enfermera. We have a ter thermometer, headache, ambulance, uh, pills, flu, operating room, inhaler. Um, we have cup syrup. Ear H or el dolor de, de oídos. Uh, we have also prescription, uh, tablets, injection, a stomach, and we have a lot of things. Now we are going to do an exercise. I'm going to write some situations. Para el ejercicio voy a escribir algunas um, situaciones. 
situaciones y ustedes van a poner el nombre correcto de cada una de esas situaciones. So, we are going to start with the first one. This is very, very easy. Okay, the first one, it says, not being able to sleep at night is called, what is the name of that? Insomnia. That's good, insomnia. Then we have the number two. Some people are we have in the space to dogs. Some people are what? Allergy. Allergy. Uh -huh, allergic. Allergy. That's good. Number three. Um, a doctor who operates on people, it's called a doctor who operates some people, it's called. We have, listen, we have four uh, options. Number one, dentist. Number two, cardiologist. Number three, optician. And number four, surgeon. 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 Good. Surgeon. Amazing. Good. Number four. My nose has been, has been right now. Uh -huh. But in this case, we are using run or running. My nose has running. been Sorry. Running. Running, no. running. Running, no. running no. Good. My nose has been running. I. We have the space a fever. In this case, I am or I have. I have. I have. I have. Good. Number six. I have a throat. I have what? Sore throat. Sore throat. Uh -huh. Sore throat. <laughs> Good. Number seven. I have um I have a stomach. Whoa. Bad. A chay or sore. Sore. Sore stomach? Stomach it. Uh -huh. Stomach it. That's good. Then we have I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little under the weather. weather. Ah, good. under the weather. My doctor is saying something. It says, what are you? Symptoms. What are your what? Symptoms. Uh-huh. Symptoms, good. Then I have number nine. I mean, number 10. It says, take this to the, wait, wait, wait. Very messy. <laughs> and get your 
medicine. Take this to the pharmacy. What? What I need to take to the pharmacy? Um, how say for Seta? Medicine. Well, no, I have three options. I have three options. Listen. Prescription. Ah, prescription. That's uh -huh. good. Prescription. That's the uh, way to say receta, la prescripción. Good. Nice. Amazing. Okay. Now, uh, in this case, we were just making uh, some uh, vocabulary for this topic. This is not a really, really, um, how can I say, hard topic to understand because there is just the vocabulary to uh, have some words in our hands to talk about health. Um, but now we are going to uh, go to the next topic. That is a kind of long and a little bit hard. That is the infinity compliments for advices. Let me see, wait. Ok, um, el primer tema tiene que ver con salud, eh, palabras que utilizamos para hablar con nuestro doctor, eh, eh, enfermedades y cosas así, cosas comunes. But in this case, we are going to talk about the infinitive complements for advices, that is also um, used to talk about health. But in this case, let me see first. I will uh, stop sharing my screen and I will uh, show you something. So give me some time to uh, show the other screen because we are going to talk about infinity compliments for advice. So let's see. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see. And this is number two. I guess because we also we are going to talk about a uh, can cool in May for advices because in the last week we were talking about uh, the model verbs but in a general way in this case we are going to um, try to divide the, the model verbs to uh, understand the different the different uh, ways to use them. Okay, let's see. In this case, um, no, no, no. Okay, here we are. I find the video. We have a conversation in the um, in the platform. That is the conversation called health problems. And it talk about the um, using infinitive complements. We are going to see what are the infinitive complements. And also we are going to um, listen the conversation that is happening in this video. So I'm going to uh, share the screen where you can uh, see the video and then we are going to explain a little more about the uh, complement or the infinity complement for advice. So let's see, we are going to share the screen with the sound because this uh, explanation and conversation, let's see. Soup. 
Just chop up a whole head of garlic. Their words, we're ready to listen to them in context. Also, pay attention to suggestions given when we get sick. Hi, Craig. How are you? Not so good. I have a terrible cold. Really? That's too bad. You should be at home in bed. It's really important to get a lot of rest. Yeah, you're right. And have you taken anything for it? No, I haven't. Well, it's sometimes helpful to eat garlic soup. Just chop up a whole head of garlic and cook it in chicken stock. Try it. It really works. Yuck. That sounds awful. <laughs> okay, they are talking about uh, that some of uh, one of, uh, of them is not feeling well. So in this case, let me see if I can, but in this case, you? I don't know so why good. it's seen like this because they have a really, really bad, um, we can see clearly the conversation between them because we are, we need to explain something about this. Uh, in this terrible. case, um, they are talking about that one of them is feeling sick because he has some um, uh, symptoms that he has uh, maybe a cold or flu. But let me, if I can change the, the way we can see this one, because I need you to explain something about the, the words that appear in the conversation. That is very important that we can uh, identify because we are using uh, the complements. In this case, we know that the infinitive um, in a grammar, it's the use of the verb with the two. Is the base form of the verb, uh, and in this case, this uh, complement um, is used to give some advices. So let's see if I can share the screen with the conversation, just the conversation, because we are going to develop the conversation and explain the uses of the infinitive for advices. You know that advices are in Spanish consejos. So in this case, we are not just making sentences with the, um, the infinitive forms of the verbs. In this case, we are using those infinitive form of the verbs to talk about or give advices to someone that is uh, sick. Because in this uh, case, we are talking about uh, topics that are um, involved in um, health, in, in things of health. So, okay, I have the conversation here. Let's see. So, we are going to start with the conversation. It's called health problems. It says, John is talking to Craig. It says, hi, Craig, how are you? And Craig is not feeling really well, right? Not so good, I have a terrible cold. Joan says, really? That's too bad. You should be at home in bed. It's really important to get a lot of rest. In this case, we're going to pay attention to this phrase. It's really important to get a lot of rest. In that phrase, we are using the infinitive. En esa frase donde ella le dice, en serio, eso es muy malo, deberías de estar en casa, en cama. Es muy importante que tengas mucho descanso. To get a lot of rest. In that case, she is giving an advice. Ella le está dando un consejo. Él dice que se siente mal. Ella le dio un consejo de qué es lo que puede hacer para sentirse mejor. And in those cases that when we are uh, saying something or giving some advices, we use the infinitive to get. So in that case, he says that he is feeling bad because he have a terrible cold. And she said, it's really important to get a lot of rest. Es importante que obtengas mucho descanso o tengas mucho descanso. Next. Yeah, you're right. And have you taken anything for it? ¿Has tomado algo para eso? No, I haven't. The next one. Well, it's sometimes helpful to eat. 
helpful to eat garlic soup. Just chop up a whole head of garlic and cook it in kitchen stock. Try it. It really worked. Yeah, that's so awful. In that case, she is giving another advice. The second advice is to eat garlic soup. So in this case, we have two advices. The number one, to get a lot of rest. And the second one, to eat garlic soup. So in those cases that when we are talking about some things in, um, uh, in health, in, in topics of health, we use the infinity to give advices. Damos consejos utilizando eso. Empezamos, oh, con una, um, how can I say? Um, with an adverb, I mean, adverb of times or uh, that kind of words. Then we uh, continue with that verb in infinity form to give them an, an advice. In this case, we can say, mm, if someone says, I am feeling very bad. No me siento nada bien, me siento muy mal. And I have a, a head. Me duele la cabeza. ¿Qué podemos decir nosotros? Oh, that's really bad. You need to, you need to go to your house and uh, take some pills. See, maybe it can be an advice. Then, um, after you after you take the rest you have to go to the doctor to have your medicines or your uh, to have your exams so in this case when we are uh, giving uh, um, these advices we use the infinity ver uh, form of the verb and we already know that the infinity form of the verb is two plus the main form of the verb that is the infinitive without uh, changes and no conjunctions and i mean no ing form of the verb um, just the verb in infinity form solo utilizamos el verbo en forma infinitiva más el to para dar consejos that's the way we that the information that we need about the uh, infinity complements for advices. No es nada más. Solo son eh, los usos del infinitivo a la hora de dar consejos. Y en este caso, porque estamos utilizando el, el tema de salud, pues obviamente dar consejos para la salud. So, then we are going to, let me see. Then we have another uh, video that explains better the uses of the infinity. In this case, we are going to listen and see the explanation of the infinity uh, complements that are the same that we were uh, seeing in the conversation. So in this case, it is just the explanation how to use them and what is the better way Hi, to see. In this session, infinity complements will be taught. Infinity complements are used to ask and give advice. I will give you a quick example right now. What should I do for a cold? It's a good idea to take some vitamin C. And stay with us and join the explanation after the audio program. Infinitive complements. What should you do for a cold? It's important to get a lot of rest. Sometimes helpful to eat garlic soup. It's a good idea to take some vitamin C. Remember when we talk about infinitives, we refer to a verb with no conjugation. So notice that we use to plus verb within our suggestions or advice. So if you want to give an advice to someone, you should do it this way. It is helpful to go to the doctor. It is important to drink lots of water. It's a good idea to take cough drops. Last verb. Okay, so that's all the information that we need about the infinitive complements of for advices. That we have the two plus the verb, and uh, that's the main point of these kind of sentences. 
And we have some examples. In this case, eh, that's the suggestion and advice. Es un, es un, um, estamos sugiriendo algo. Estamos dando un consejo. So we have the sentence, it is helpful to go to the doctor. To go to the doctor. That is the main point. Then it is important to drink lots of water. Es importante tomar mucha agua. And the last one, it is a good idea to take cough drops. So those are the, um, the advices that we can use as an example. That is the saying that I was saying before about G uh, infinity complements for advices. That is very, very simple. There is no, um, nothing very, uh, how can I say, um, difficult to understand because those topics are very, very simple. So we are going to continue with cool, can cool made for advices. We are talking about advices again, and it is important to know, let me see this one. Um, how can we uh, use those words, in this case, the modal verbs for giving advice? So let me change this one to begin with the next topic. Okay, we are going to remember what are the modal verbs. It says that the modal verbs, um, they are a type of auxiliary verb that we can use with other verbs to add more meaning to the verb. After modal verbs, we use the infinitive form without to. En este caso, tenemos los modales o los modal verbs que son verbos auxiliares. Estos verbos auxiliares agregan un poco más de significado al verbo. Y eh, después de lo que es el modal verb, utilizamos el infinitivo. Solo que en este caso lo vamos a utilizar sin el to. Infinitive without to, that is just the base form of the verb, without to. That is infinitive, not eh, with any conjugation. The modal verbs are not used with the auxiliary verb do to form the negative. We are not after the modal to ask questions. We put the modal in front of the subject. The first one. We put the model in front of the subject. Lo ponemos en frente del sujeto. And we have an example. Hey. Couldn't pass me that play. For you. Then another example, can I have a taste? So in front of the subject. Models do not change in the third person singular form in the present simple. In this case, we are not going to use the rule of the third person and in singular when we are using the present. Because we know that in simple present, we have um, this rule to write uh, the verbs. But in this case, we are not uh, talking about the, the uh, whole list of verbs. We are talking about the auxiliary verbs. And in this case, they can uh, use this rule. Para los modal verbs, que son auxiliares, no vamos a utilizar esta regla de la tercera persona del he, she, it, donde le agregamos s, e, s o i, e, s a las palabras, porque no entran en esa categoría de verbos. En el presente simple sí lo utilizamos, pero con los eh, modal verbs no, no se aplica porque son auxiliares.
It says that model seems quite easy to use. Why do we use them for? ¿Para qué los utilizamos nosotros lo que son los modales? We use them for lots of different things and the same modal verbs can have several different uses. Uh, we are going to look at offers, invitation, and requests, and permissions. And remember that we need to talk about can, cool, and may for advices. And it says that we can use them for offers, invitation, requests, and permissions. And it says, you are giving in, in this um, sentence, right, fire away, I mean, you can fire away if you like. In this case, you are giving me permission. Thank you. We use will plus like um, a lot for offers. So it says, we have. Um, Teacher, tell me. Teacher, I have a I have a question. Tell me. When when you say the put the model in front of the subject, this mirroring the the model verb uh, put be, before the subject. Yes, in that case, you write first the model verb, then you write the subject. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So in this case, it says, we have like a formula in this case, in the number two. And it says, um, we use wool plus like a lot for offers. It's very useful for different situations. Would you like to come to our house for dinner? And in this case, we can say, and in this uh, sentence, will, because we are making a question, will, and we are going to uh, change the color because it is easier to understand the use of this uh, formula. Will, then we have first the auxiliary, then we have the subject, that is you. Uh, the, uh, the, the subject here, would you like? Because we are using um, this uh, formula. Would you like to come to our house for dinner? In this case, we are making an offer. Yeah, when we are right like this, offers. So in this question, would you like to come to our house for dinner? We are making an offer for someone to visit our house for dinner time. Then we have another one and it says, would you like some? Would you like? Um, in this case, we are going to change this. Mm, we can say, would you like some chocolate? ¿Te gustaría un poco de chocolate? Would you like some chocolate? We are making offers. We are offering something. Well, um, Tomorrow we are going to end this topic about the modal verbs and we are going to develop the other topic that we have for the week. Now it's time to say goodbye. Have a really good night and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So we are going to stop the session here. And remember to work in the platform because it is very important to work in the platform to record your progress. Así que nos vemos el día de mañana. Eh, pasen una feliz noche y trabajen en la plataforma cuando tengan tiempo. Ok, teacher. Good night. Good night, good night teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.